Okay, so let's look at um, another example here uh, of solving uh, across, you know, um, the complex plane, right? So looking for uh, complex solutions. And, and like the thing about these problems is that they're always going to give you a little bit of information to help kind of solve this, right? So um, it's telling you 1 plus 3i is a 0. So automatically you're going to get um, 1 minus 3i as your other 0, right? So that's 1, 0, that's 2 zeros, and a degree 4. So again, same kind of theme, right? That, that if I could reduce a fourth degree to a second degree, I have a lot more strategies to solve that second degree than I did a fourth degree. And I'm going to try to be efficient with my factors. So again, just kind of stress this, like x minus the 0 of 1 plus 3i, and then another factor would have been x minus 1 minus, oops, uh, 3i. Said it right, just kind of wrote it wrong. There you go, 1 minus 3i. Okay. And again, regrouping, it's probably the most beneficial use of the associative property. All right, we never use it in math. I'm just going to associate x minus 1 together, and that's minus 3i. And then I'll associate x minus 1 plus 3i. It's always going to work this way because they're conjugate pairs. It's always going to be a difference of squares. Remember, it has that characteristic structure a minus b, a plus b, which gives you the difference of squares, a squared minus b squared. This is your first term, your a. This is your b, right? So you have a minus b, and this is a plus b. So I hope people see that, right? That, that the structure, once you see that, it makes multiplying this really, really easy, right? It's just a squared minus b squared. So that's what I'll do. So I'll go ahead and make that x minus 1 squared minus 9i squared. And that's always going to be negative, right? Because one's negative, one's positive. But then remember, i squared is a negative 1. So this becomes x minus 1 squared. And then you're going to add 9 more. Um, so f go ahead and multiply that out, x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 9, or x squared minus 2x plus 10. So I know that that quadratic, that trinomial, has to evenly divide um, out of our given problem, right? Because we knew they were both factors. So let's work backwards, just like we did in the previous one. So identifying this first term, x to the fourth, x squared, can only happen if that's an x squared, right? Because um, the, the when I multiply, that's going to give me x to the fourth. So I'm good with that. Um, I believe it's 60, right, uh, was our number. And so negative 60. So if this isn't plus 10, the only way to get negative 60 is if you had a minus 6. So, so that worked out nice. So again, thinking about this, it's already 2 thirds done, right? x squared, we need some, some amount of x's minus 6. And it doesn't really matter where you look. So like, for example, if you liked that negative 38x, so let's think about where do x's come from? Well, x's would come from, um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's just switch that. So x's would come from, um, you know, uh, it would be this number, negative 2x times negative 6. So there's 12 x's right there. Now, we and we need um, negative 38 x's, right? Um, and then they'd also come from 10 times this. So if I need negative 38 x, and I already have 12 of them, right, from uh, negative 2 times negative 6 is 12, that means I better make sure I have a negative 50 x because negative 50 plus 12 would give me negative 30. Well, 10 times negative 5 would do the trick. So, uh, you know, again, I'm kind of, I'm working backwards because I know it already factors. So I was able to obtain that negative 5 that way. Okay. And it would have worked for, um, you know, the cubes as well. Maybe you're, oh, hmm, still got that glitch in the smart board. Maybe you were after that negative 7. Okay, so thinking about where does you know where do where do the x cubes come from? So uh, you know, well, um, negative two x times x squared. So there's negative two x cubed. This times this, right? So that's negative two x cubed. And then where else would x cubes come from? Well, it'll be this times that. And so there, you know, there's negative five. So so again, it works out the same. 
Um, and, and so it doesn't matter which one you pick, you just pick one of them. Okay. So then I know, okay, so, um, I have X squared minus five X minus six that factors further. So I here, here's my X squared minus two X plus 10. That gave me my two complex solutions. Um, and then X minus six and X plus one, those two factors would have given me negative 5x minus 6, which means my two real zeros were x equals 6 and x equals negative 1. So there's one solution, two solutions, and then uh, 1 minus 3i would be the third missing solution. Okay. And, you know, I, I hope, I mean, like, I really, really, really hope that um, this piece right here makes sense, like where you start with your factors and then you regroup them using the associative property. Okay. So then um, it looks like there's one, oh, there's, oh, there's two more examples. Okay. So, um, so what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and um, make um, one more video uh, that solves the other two examples. Um, but if you want to try them first and then check the video, that is perfectly fine too.